Okay, well, good morning, everybody, um, and thank you once again for your attendance on this, the third day um, of the event, the LCA4 Regions Transnational Learning Journey event. Um, once again, on behalf of the team here in Navarra, in the Rural Development and Environmental Department, uh, and also the wider government, I'd like to offer you all a very warm welcome. Um, I think by now, the third day, you should know me by now, but anyway, I'll introduce myself briefly. My name is David Rimes. Uh, I'm a language training consultant here in Navarra, and I'll be moderating the first half of today's session ahead of the peer-to-peer -peer review that will take part uh, take place in the second half. Okay. Now today is our last day, and shortly we'll be making two virtual study visits uh, to companies based here in Navarra. Okay. Um, first up. We're going to begin today with a video from Agralco. Now, Agralco are a, a company dedicated to transforming and valorizing byproducts in the production of wine. Okay. After the video, um, David Sotillo uh, here in Navarra will engage with the company director, Fermin Esandi. Okay. Um, and then together we will. Um, deal with some questions. David is going to address the questions to Fermin in Spanish and um, we'll be listening to the reply and I'll do my best to uh, to transmit in English uh, the uh, the reply. Okay. Um, for those of those attendees and other panelists, anyone, any interested parties, um, you have the chat box uh, to the right of your screen, or you can open it using the speech bubble at the bottom of the screen. Um, and the usual drill, address your questions um, to all panelists, and then the team here will filter them and pass them to me um, to answer orally if any questions do occur, okay? Um, after we finished with uh, Fermin and, and Agroco, we move on to the second um, study visit. And this time we have, uh, Eusebio Gainza, um, who's going to present in person in English to us. Um, and we're going to learn more about their innovative use of olive trees in producing high quality ecological olive oil and polyphenol rich food and health products. Okay. And again, the same thing applies as we're, um, as you're listening to uh, Eusebio's presentation, you can address questions to him through the chat box, and then he'll answer them in person with me after. Okay, that will take us to about halfway through the morning. And then in the second half of this final session, I'm going to pass over to uh, Paolo Marengo of ACR Plus, and um, he's going to manage a peer to peer review with uh, representatives from the different partner regions. And he's also going to, uh, at the beginning there, introduce um, exactly how he's going to structure that and so on. Okay, so that's today. And now, without further ado, I'm going to, um, we're going to pass to the, the video of Agralco. Okay, Sandra.
Okay, right. So that was uh, the video. Um, I'm hoping that uh, that it streamed successfully to uh, to all of you in in uh, your different countries and, and so on. Um, very beautifully made, I must say. Um, I'm going to uh, pass now to David Sotillo. Uh, he's a, a technician here in the um, Circular Economy Service here in the government of Navarra, and he's going to address uh, some questions to Fermin uh, in uh, in Spanish. And then, as I say, I'll be uh, working here to, to try to transmit to you in English uh, the content of what Fermin says. Okay, David? Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm very glad to see you again, even under these uh, circumstances. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank on my, uh, on my behalf and on behalf of the government of Navarra to Fermín Sandy and Agralco for uh, their collaboration in this project. Uh, this example has shown you uh, how from uh, byproducts of winemaking, uh, we can uh, we can make a very high uh, value uh, add, added value products such as uh, alcohol, oil, and an oceanim or uh, tartrated salt. Okay, uh, this not uh, this is not only an example of a circular economy, but also an example of a company that results profitable and self sufficient in terms of energy. You've seen how they obtain their the heat they need in their process by means of their byproducts, and they also can obtain uh, more than half of their electricity. So, I would like to address uh, Fermín Sandy some questions now. Uh, I'm going to address him in Spanish, and then David is going to translate you that questions and their answers. Okay, thank you very much, Fermín. Buenos días. Bueno, ¿Me puedes oír? Sí, sí, te oigo bien. Sí. Eh, buenos días. Mira, eh, te quería preguntar lo primero eh, acerca de las dificultades que una empresa como la vuestra, basada en la economía circular, o cuyos objetivos, uno de los cuales es la economía circular, aparte de obtener beneficios, tiene desde un punto de vista de normativa y de acción del gobierno. ¿Qué dificultades os encontráis? Espera un momento, igual eh, traduces luego. Ok, traduce luego. Puedes contestar, Fermín. Dificultades. Bueno, eh, una dificultad en la gestión es la cantidad de normativa que hay. Uh -huh. La cantidad de normativa que hay. Es... Y entonces, a una empresa pequeña, al final, tiene que crear casi un departamento, lo que llaman en los bancos, de compliance, uh -huh. ¿no? de, de cumplimiento de toda la regulación, porque la regulación abarca todos los ámbitos inimaginables. ¿eh? Uh -huh. pues, los que marca el Ministerio de Agricultura para la actividad propia de colaboración con el Ministerio de Agricultura, a los que marca el Ministerio de Medio Ambiente, uh -huh. en cuanto a regulación de vertidos, de emisiones a la atmósfera, eh, todas las reglamentaciones técnicas de almacenamiento de productos químicos, es, es, es ingente la, la legislación. Uh -huh. que hay, ¿eh? Entonces, una, una problemática para la gestión diaria es... Es que, es que estáis sometidos a autorización ambiental integrada, dice la Administración. Vosotros, ¿qué controláis? Dice, cada técnico conoce muy bien una emisiones a la atmósfera, otro vertidos al agua, otro gestión uh -huh. de residuos. Dice, aquí el que recibe todo eso tiene, tiene que integrar sí, en sí, su sí, mente sí. toda la... Esa es una cuestión de, 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 de uh -huh. diaria. Lo asumimos que es así, pero, pero es realmente difícil gestionar para una pequeña o mediana empresa toda la legislación que hay. Es un hecho. Sí. Es decir, no, no quiero decir, tiene que ser así, sí, sí. pero, pero es, es, es un hecho constatable. Sí, vamos, por resumir, podríamos hablar de mucha legislación y eh, poca capacidad de integrarla en materia ambiental, por ejemplo. Sí. Y luego, aparte, en términos de análisis de ciclo de vida, ¿tenéis alguna experiencia? No, ¿Habéis ver, hecho alguna? No, nosotros, análisis de ciclo de vida, no lo hacemos como tal. Nosotros, desde hace uh -huh. 60 años, lo que hacemos es lo mismo, la gestión de los subproductos 
de vinificación de las bodegas asociadas. Lo que pasa es que la política implantada en la empresa es la de mejora continua de procesos y productos, uh -huh. siempre, buscando un valor, mayor valor añadido al, a lo que se obtiene y adecuándonos a lo que demanda el mercado. Pongo un ejemplo. Eh, nosotros hacíamos tradicionalmente alcohol para uso industrial, como sí. diferente, pero desde hace cuatro años que sale la directiva de energías renovables, ¿eh? uh -huh. entonces reorientamos nuestra producción a la bioetanol para la mezcla con gasolina, porque económicamente es más rentable. Entonces, yeah. tienes que adaptar tu, mm, tu cumplimiento a ese. Sí, fer tienes que cumplir la directiva europea de la ISCC, la Ver International Sustainability uh -huh. Carbon Certification. Es decir, uh -huh. hemos tenido que certificar, en, nos hacen auditorías desde Alemania todos los años, Dentro de pocos días tenemos una auditoría para renovar la autorización para producir bietanol que se mezcle uh -huh. con la gasolina. Perfecto. Eso. ¿Tenéis alguna certificación de huella de carbón, alguna historia de estas? La certificación de huella de carbón está la, la ISCC. Es decir, Perfecto. Nosotros, digamos que en la producción de vino, el, le asignan la huella de carbono, los orujos y los lías, a los subproductos, uh -huh. hasta la salida de la bodega. Y Perfecto. Entonces, desde la salida de la bodega empieza la huella de carbón, es decir, el transporte de orujos y días, nuestro proceso sí. de producción y el transporte de alcohol a destino. Tenemos Perfecto. la huella de carbono y en nuestro caso es magnífica, es magnífica uh -huh. porque Fermín. al ser el 100% de la energía térmica generada por el... Al... Sí, sí, no, si te entiendo, lo que pasa es que va a ser difícil de traducir, ¿eh? Tanta... Bueno, momento, por, por resumir, por resumir, no, te, no quiero para, ser mal educado. Para, ahí, para vos, venga. Por resumir, mira, eh, más o menos lo que podemos decir es que es vuestro día a día el hecho de ir analizando procesos y que sí que está certificada la huella de carbono de cara al ISCC, ¿no? Eso es. Eso más es. que nada para que pueda traducir David. Eso, para, que, para que lo traduzcan bien, claro. Sí. Eh, David, todo tuyo. Thank you very much, uh, David, and uh, yeah, thank you, Fermín. Okay, I'll do my best because um, the, the, the truth is there was a lot of content in uh, in what Fermín was saying. Okay, the first question um, was whether his company has encountered difficulties in uh, in in regulation um, for the business, as it, as it were. Um, and Fermín made very clear that the first and major difficulty is the sheer quantity of legislation. Okay, he said the, the 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 quantity of legislation means that a company actually needs, uh, in reality, a compliance department. Um, they have to comply with the demands of the Ministry of Agriculture, for example, for the Environmental Department, uh, directives on air quality, uh, on on waste products, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And it's um, the word he used is overwhelming. It's actually overwhelming, and that a company needs to employ technicians, uh, specialists in all of those areas, in, in uh, uh, air quality, water quality, et cetera. So one of the major difficulties for the company is that, is, is coping with the sheer quantity of legislation uh, and, and the know-how know necessary. Okay. The second question uh, that we addressed to him was about LCA tools and their experience. Uh, and Fermin said uh, that they don't have direct experience, not as such. Okay. However, um, they do um, take care to, you know, they, they um, participate in the circular economy and so on. And with the management of sub products, mainly uh, um, the impulse for this, I guess, is to, is to benefit um, the wine producers. It's what the wine producers demand of them because they're continually looking for added value. Um, and they're also continually trying to adapt to the market, obviously trying to get the, the maximum value out of the, the products, out of the grapes themselves. Um, and he gave an example, which is, for example, uh, the example he gave was industrial use alcohol, um, that as the market shifted, they needed to change from um, producing that to bioethanol. Um, and this was partly to suit the demands of the uh, EU directives, but also partly the demands um, of the market is, itself. And he went on to give another example as well of um, regulations and, and uh, directives coming from the German market. Uh, the third question David asked was um, about ESCC, about certification in general. Um, and Fermin said, yes, they do in fact have ESCC, 
um, they are ESCC certified um, and they do carbon footprint tracking. Okay, so everything, um, their, their carbon footprint is measured right from um, energy used in, in production and separation of the different elements and also uh, even transport and all of those other things. Okay, so I think, um, David, I don't know if you have anything to comment further on that. I think that's the, the gist of what he said. No, so thanks, perfect. Okay, thank you again to uh, to Fermin. Okay, um, we're going to move on now um, to the second study visit, and we're going to hear now from um, Eusebio Gainza of uh, Biasasun. Hi, uh, Eusebio. Can you unmute your microphone? You need to un unmute your microphone. That's it. Hello, Eusebio. Hello. Can you hear me? Hi. Yes, Hi. I can hear you. Yes. Okay. If you if you'd like to begin to share your uh, your PowerPoint, and I'll introduce you briefly. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, uh, Eusebio uh, is a, a PhD engineer um, from the in industrial engineering. Um, in Bilbao, and where he did his uh, doctoral thesis, uh, he's a member of, who oh, been a member of numerous public bodies, uh, including Director of Praxis Biopharma Research Institute, and he's been involved over the course of his career in 160 uh, research projects. He's made 43 publications, seven patents, and he's been the president of the association Ayotara from 2008, uh, 2008. Ayotara is the um, Association of Ecological, Arable and Livestock Farmers. And this is an entity linked to Biosasun that he's going to be talking about today, made up of farmers and related professionals in the Estella region in the south of Navarra. Okay, and their activities center around fomenting ecological, arable and livestock farming and related commercial and uh, professional activities. And they've been doing this for 30 years. Um, now, Eusebio is also a member of Biosasun SA Executive Board. He's been that since uh, 2001. And Biosasun in Basque, in the Basque language, in Euskera, uh, means double health, double health. Okay. The company, as I've said on other days, produces olive oils uh, mm -hmm. with a high polyphenol content, probiotics and other food product products, and they develop technical assistance. Um, for other agri-food companies, other companies in the sector, and promote R and D and uh, and innovation initiatives. So, my goodness, Eusebio, are you ready? Okay, but uh, first of all, uh, I I put my presentation, or after that will be the video. I don't know. What's the, what's the first, uh, the video or, or my presentation? Oh, okay, video first, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, Sandra, Sandra is on the video. Yes, my, my apologies there. Okay. Okay.
Hello, David. Hi, hi. Um, do you have your video ready? Uh, your yes, uh, video? I think so. Yeah, and you're starting to check. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Eusebio, the floor is, is yours. Um, you need, okay. need, to, need to launch the presentation. And yes, we can see that on screen, so away you go. Yes, as you say, we are two organizations working together, linked between the Agricultural Association Ayotara, where we are the, the some uh, uh, small exploitation of uh, olive trees. And in this case, in Ayotara, I am the president. And uh, uh, this uh, connection, as you explained first, uh, uh, is very, very uh, Sure, very strong with uh, Biosasun. Uh, Biosasun, uh, as you say in Basque language, means uh, uh, two health, double health. Uh, it was founded uh, 20 years ago and uh, began, uh, we were developing uh, some kind of special uh, uh, olive uh, oil uh, with a high co uh, continuum in, in polyphenols. Uh, and, uh, and for that, we can put the the EPSA, EPSA uh, uh, clean in, in in our product. And after that, we develop some application uh, and produce uh, 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 probiotics uh, with this kind of probiotics and the uh, as uh, ingredient for other kind of uh, uh, food. Um, inside the company, we have three uh, de uh, departments or areas, the, the marketing, distribution and elaboration of ecological and functional products, the engineering, design and advice of sustainable uh, solution uh, for other companies. Uh, our experience, we are translating to other companies, more of them in the, uh, in the wine sector and, uh, and the R&D uh, area. For us, it's very important because we are developing every year uh, some uh, new uh, activities and technologies to employ more of the uh, uh, polyphenols uh, from the olive trees. In, in this way, the, uh, the, our business strategy is, is going in three uh, ways. The, the, the first, the, the, the production and development of probiotic uh, in our facilities in connection with uh, technological uh, and centers and universities. The, the production of prebiotics, uh, the uh, prebiotics, the polyphenol extract from organic olive trees. That is important, we uh, come from organic olive trees because if we concentrate uh, uh, this kind of uh, uh, polyphenol from no organic olive trees, we concentrate also the pesticides. And the first one is the use of a nanotechnology to nano encapsulation of this kind of polyphenols, using lipid nanoparticles and also in connection with nanoxids. That is the, the, the process map of the company and the association from the quality to the grade. And uh, we develop uh, action in all the uh, uh, the life cycle of the uh, of the uh, um, product, uh, from the growth matters uh, to the, the manufacture, the distribution, the, the use, and the the, the recycling uh, and the use of the waste. Our principal uh, process is the, of course, the the, the production of uh, olives and the production from the olives, the oil and uh, polyphenol concentrate. Uh, from the last uh, ten years, we are using uh, some uh, LCA uh, tools. The, the first uh, was developed in, inside the uh, Recibo West Oliva project. That was a, a European project uh, led by uh, Luraderra Sen uh, Technological Center. And uh, in this uh, uh, European project, uh, we developed a special uh, LCA uh, tool. Uh, to uh, calculate the, the, the impact in, in uh, ecology, the, the, uh, the economic impact also, and the eco-social uh, um, impact. In this way, we calculate the ecological uh, impact in kilowatt uh, per ton of uh, uh, olives. Uh, here you can say the 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 results in, in this evaluation. This evaluation was made in a small uh, uh, 
company, the name is Ecolo, near uh, 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 our um, facilities, actual facilities, and uh, also we calculate the eco-social uh, contribution in this case because it was uh, negative, and the uh, economic cost of, of the production of uh, 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 olive oil. The, the other tool we are using was the, the carbon footprint. In, in this case, it was uh, made uh, in, in our uh, uh, um, exploitation, uh, uh, agricultural exploitation, and also uh, in the ecolo facilities. And we calculate the, the distribution of the uh, emission of CO2 uh, for different uh, kind of product, the, the, the glass uh, bottle. Uh, uh, for uh, olive, the the, the pet uh, bottle and uh, into kind uh, two liters of uh, five liters. Of course, in the agricultural and extraction, uh, the, the the contribution uh, for uh, uh, liter of oil is the same. But in in the use of uh, different kind of uh, bottles uh, uh, is different. Uh, the glass bottle format contributes significantly to the full, final, final uh, uh, carbon food, representing more of the 32% of the emission. Eh? And that uh, was the, the first question, because uh, we were uh, always uh, thinking that the, the glass uh, is the best because uh, they no translate uh, nothing to the product. But it, it, the weight is, alt, is, is high, uh, of course, and also the production of glass uh, is, is more uh, uh, cause in, in CO2 aspect uh, uh, than other kind of uh, product. After that, uh, uh, we improve uh, uh, a lot of action uh, in, in the last 10 years, uh, just from uh, uh, the beginning of this uh, century to, to the, the last year. Uh, as, as you can see in, in the video, uh, the continuous improvement of practice of the oil growth in organic farming, uh, the, the plant uh, uh, covered mountains and farms, the keeping from in the growth of wild, the concentration of phytosanitary treatment uh, to minimize the atmosphere emission, the use of potassium oleato from uh, uh, our oil uh, results also, the, 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 uh, the plan of uh, the different kind of uh, uh, in, 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 in forest plants uh, to farming uh, stores and prevent uh, erosion and, and, and to, to get the nitrogen uh, for the trees, and the control use of milling and your Perujo waste to control uh, uh, the, 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 the production uh, and, and the, of uh, no sustainable plants. Also, uh, in, in this free area, the design of construction of sustainable facilities, I think in the, in the way that you can say uh, the, 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 the kinds of, of uh, small construction, for us, the, the, the best is the small, the, the, the kind of uh, sales, uh, clean sales to, to produce the product. Uh, uh, we try to reduce uh, the, because uh, with, uh, with this uh, kind of construction, we uh, reduce also the, the, uh, the heat uh, necessary to, to maintain the, the, uh, the air condition. Also in the safe and energy efficiency, uh, 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 we uh, use uh, solar panels and also uh, cogeneration. We take uh, the, 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 uh, the power from, uh, uh, from GLPs and also uh, we use the, 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 the results, the, uh, the emissions to, uh, uh, to um, uh, produce uh, uh, the, the pellet uh, in this case. Uh, also, implanting cleaning processes, uh, adjustment of the different machinery and productive capacities, the adoption of uh, uh, olive gloves to, uh, to be collected with a biblioteca umbrella, set always with uh, discoveries. Uh, we have no uh, uh, emission of uh, water. Uh, all the water uh, we use, uh, as you can see in the video, uh, uh, to produce the, 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 the compost in, and also to, to the irrigation of the uh, 
that is the kind of uh, uh, improvement we are uh, uh, made in in our uh, facilities and and lands. That is uh, uh, in the last year. I don't know where put this one because uh, uh, we. Uh, mm, uh, calculate the, again the, the emission of CO2 eh? uh, with the, the first uh, uh, um, uh, initial production methods. And in this case, as you can say, the total emission of CO2 for uh, a kilogram of olive leaves uh, uh, is about uh, 6.5 uh, 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 kilograms of CO2. Uh, in, in the cost, in the, about cost, uh, the, 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 the big cost for us uh, is to obtain the aqueous concentration of olive polyphenols uh, because uh, we were using uh, lyophilization uh, processes, uh, uh, dry uh, system, and it's, it's, it's very, very uh, expensive in energy. Uh, uh, we, uh, we done uh, this uh, process outside of the company and uh, inside uh, for a small production. And after that, we decide to uh, um, develop a new technology to, to concentrate the olive polyphenols. That's true. And that is the, the, the cost and the sales uh, for kilograms. As you can say, the, 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 this kind of production uh, is maintained because uh, we have uh, subventions in, in, in the European Union, in the INDECA. Uh, after this one, uh, we, we prepare a, a new plan of uh, reduction of emissions uh, for, for two principal uh, processes, the, the cultivation uh, processes, the production or process of olive polyphenols, uh, that is now for us a, a very interesting process, and also the ingredient and use of bioproduce process. And in this case, uh, um, we uh, developed some action and we are making uh, in, in, in the action. After that, uh, uh, the objective for, uh, for us will be the uh, reduce uh, from 6.5 uh, 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 kilograms of CO2 uh, uh, to uh, less than 3 uh, kilograms and this reduction of the emission uh, uh, about 30 percent uh, of total emission and in the balance because uh, of course the, the production of uh, uh, olives is uh, absorb a, a lot of uh, uh, CO2 in, in, in the vegetative uh, activity of the tree, uh, reducing about the, the 50 percent. After that, uh, which will be for us the, 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 the aspect more interesting, uh, we can look in this, uh, in, in this conclusion. First of all, the, 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 the the control of the emission of the manufacturing glass uh, container, uh, changing this uh, this kind of uh, uh, bottle, the emission reduction in, in what olive raw in processes, and uh, where we can uh, represent uh, about uh, fifty percent lower, and taking account the absorption of the CO two. Uh, it's managed a new absorption of more than 80 kilo or CO2 uh, per kilogram of product point in the market. Regarding the production cost of the processes in the olive seed economy, uh, um, the, the more important for us is, uh, is develop the, 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 the sales of the uh, uh, um, polyphenols. Uh, in different kind of uh, of market, uh, cosmetic and food uh, as food ingredient, we put in our product this extra claim: the polyphenols in olive oil contributes to the production of a product uh, of blood lipids again oxidative damage. That means the LDL, the, the, the we say the, the bad cholesterol, uh, is not oxidated, and that means is not uh, uh, um, deposited in, in, inside the, the basis uh, of uh, the blood basis. 
And uh, the, this uh, contribute, uh, as EFSA reconos, the, uh, the, uh, the, the diminution of uh, uh, atherosclerosis. That is the, the, the and we are uh, looking uh, some application, including this uh, our uh, this kind of production of polyphenols in in different uh, 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 animals in different food. Uh, we have uh, from the beginning of the uh, residue West Olive uh, project, uh, we have a, a battery of indicators comparing uh, every year uh, where uh, we were and, and where uh, we'll be uh, go. And in this case, uh, as I, uh, I comment, uh, the, the principle for us is the reduction of CO2 uh, from 6.5 6, uh, to uh, about 3. Uh, but uh, we have also uh, other kind of uh, uh, indicators. Uh, are toxic, the reduction of toxic, the wash reuse, uh, the, the, the raw material for cosmetics, the incre increasing the, the, the use of uh, our polyphenols as the uh, raw material for uh, organic food, uh, the, the, the reduction of course of the water consumption, the energy uh, reduction of course, and also the, the make replication. Uh, we began this uh, in, in a lot association with about 10 hectares. Uh, uh, the last year we increased in, uh, until uh, 24, and in this year we are near uh, 40 hectares. We are involving more and more uh, uh, persons uh, uh, in ecologic uh, cultivation with the uh, olive trees and also the, the consumer uh, the consumer uh, is about um, uh, two two thousand consumers uh, of our product but uh, next year uh, uh, we want to arrive uh, near uh, one thousand uh, uh, one hundred thousand and extend uh, our product uh, to all europe uh, and america more or less uh, that. Also, we, we get this year the, the first patent for one of those products is the use of uh, a nano formulation of polyphenols, uh, olive polyphenols uh, for uh, ulcer, uh, colitis ulcerosa, uh, uh, ulcer colitis. And thank you very much. That is my presentation. And I try to respond to your, your question. Okay, thank you very much indeed, uh, Eusebio. Thank you, yeah, most interesting. Okay, um, we have a couple of questions. Uh, the first question coming from Yolanta Davardoniene, um, and this is addressed to, to, to both. However, um, in the case of Fermin, the question is, um, which and how uh, were LC methods applied to this um, GP? Now, uh, Fermin, in his uh, answer to the question to David, made very clear that Agralco hasn't actually used life cycle assessment per se, um, but they have used a uh, carbon footprint. That is the life cycle tool for IC, ISCC certification. Okay. Um, but I'm going to address the same question to you, Eusebio, um, which is, um, Slight, well, slightly different, and you can probably see it in the chat. Is um, you did mention that you'd used LCA methods, okay? So, uh, what were the reasons for this? Why did you decide to adopt them? I, I, I think the, the question to use the, this kind of uh, uh, tools is uh, to get a real and uh, to have the possibility to to uh, determine the impact. And where are the the the, the quantity the, the of different impact and to get indicators uh, for us that is the principal indicator the the, the emission of CO two uh, but uh, and we calculate the first LCA uh, application as you can see uh, uh, as kilo weight of uh, uh, our uh, for kilo, for ton of uh, uh, olives. But uh, that was uh, 10 years ago or more. And now we, uh, the indicator, the principal indicator for us is, is the CO2 emission. Uh, 
Uh, and the, uh, of course, we, we can translate. I, I, we know how, how many uh, kilowatt we are using. Uh, we can translate to to CO two. But uh, but uh, uh, now uh, that is the principle. Uh, the 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 kilowatt that we use to to now uh, exactly exactly the, the 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 consumption of energy uh, that is important for that but, but at the end that is cost also eh? and the second one of course is the economy you must make this kind of uh, 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 new activities uh, uh, with a uh, 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 economy uh, possible to to maintain the the, the production and the uh, and the market I can know you have. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pardon. Yeah, it needs to be economically viable too. Yeah, sorry, I was I was taking notes at the same time. Okay, um, great. The next question um, is whether you've ruled out any practice which is supposed to be uh, good, positive for the environment, having uh, previously carried out life cycle assessment. Okay, so have you ruled out? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that is important because uh, uh, you can uh, um, uh, study uh, each processes, uh, comparing the emission and the cost, to do a new activity. That is the, re the principal uh, reason uh, to decide, develop a product with uh, olive uh, polyphenols. Uh, because uh, from the beginning, uh, we we saw uh, the the rentability of this sector is is not very really clear. Uh, it's maintaining uh, uh, by the cap, uh, by the, the the subvention of the European uh, uh, Union, um, and then to 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 increase the the high value of the product, you need a new apportation. That is the, the second aspect. I think it's very important now uh, with uh, is the contribution of if is uh, uh, is new activity is new reduction of the emission uh, looking not only the reduction of the emission also looking uh, to increase the 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 uh, or, or reduce the cost of the production uh, in the more of the aspect in the ecologic production of the uh, uh, olives, uh, um, the reduction of the emission and the reduction of the cost uh, are going together. Uh, the second question for us was to have uh, a integral production uh, in, in the manufacturing processes. If we have not the integral production, we cannot uh, 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 recirculate uh, water to increase the concentration of polyphenols and to get uh, a high uh, uh, concentration uh, to sell in the market. Uh, that is the second question important for us. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's a <clears throat> very comprehensive answer. Okay, well, I, th I think for the moment, that's all the questions we have. Um, I'd like to say thank you once again, uh, Eusebio, for your intervention there and for answering those questions for us. Uh, it's most interesting. And also previously to uh, Fermin from Agralco. Okay. Um, and we're going to pass now to the um, peer review. Um, and just in a moment, I'm going to um, pass the management of this section of this morning's proceedings to uh, Paolo Marengo of ACR Plus and taking part of uh, old friends from yesterday and the day before. Um, there's going to be uh, Rami Salem Deeb is back with us. Uh, hello, Paolo, I can see you there. Okay. Um, and also Raul Salanueva is here just to my left and Fritz Balcao is here too. So Paolo, um, when you're ready, Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me properly? Yes, Paolo. Yes, Paolo. Yes, okay. yes we can. Great. So, um, are we going to start uh, right now, the peer review session? Is it right? Okay. So, I try to share my screen to just uh, show the presentation. Okay, sorry, David, can I 
ask you an help just uh, because I don't know if it's possible to me to share uh, my screen oh. because I'm clicking on the button and uh, share the screen. Uh, right. Okay. Let me let me just convey that to yes. Sandra. Okay. Yes. Now you have control. Paolo, sorry oh, about that. I okay, left, thank, thank, thank you I very much. Left, left you a little bit at sea there. No, no problem. Okay, so I hope that you are seeing my presentation. Yes, 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 we can see it perfectly, yeah. Okay, great, so we thank can start. Ready. Okay, so first of all, I would like to thank very much uh, the previous presenters because um, I have to say that I regret even more not to have had the opportunity to to be there physical in person because uh, it um, yeah it would have been really interesting to to go there but they succeeded to to make us feel also the taste and the flavor of uh, such a wonderful uh, territory so thank you very much and uh, now we are going to to start uh, the peer review session that is uh, an important part uh, of uh, the project here i would like just to uh, give you a bit of an overview of what is it uh, and uh, what what's the scope of the peer review so as you can see in this slide the the main objective of the peer review is to exchange experiences uh, focusing on the local uh, policy context. So we, we have seen a lot of uh, experiences, uh, a lot of good practices, but now it's time to uh, be focused on what uh, is the policy context and how we can uh, really turn uh, such experiences in uh, concrete uh, policy actions. So of course, we, we first have to look at what uh, is it now and uh, how we can impact on it and uh, on the left uh, side of the slide you can see the journey that we are having this wonderful project uh, we are now in the second uh, semester and um, it's important that we are focused on uh, the target of uh, this uh, first part of the journey that is the exchange of experience and the target is uh, the policy roadmap uh, and the action plan so we have to after uh, uh, six semesters of uh, experience uh, we will have to deliver on uh, seven action plans so one for each of the regions involved in the project and um, we will have uh, the chance uh, to challenge this uh, action plan during the second part of the project that will be um, really implementation of those action plans. So now it's time to really try to understand how we can inspire the, the policy context through this project and how we can turn it into real, uh, the real life, let's say. So here's just to give you some uh, context and uh, how we are going to to do this uh, peer review. We decided since we will have um, uh, around uh, 50 minutes to deliver on this uh, challenging topic, we decided to um, divide the, the session in three main uh, observation points. In this slide, you can uh, see them. And the first one is uh, to challenge uh, the, the participants of this session. So the, the partners, uh, the external experts, uh, and also the attendees that can, of course, uh, intervene through making questions uh, through the chat box. So what are um, those uh, points? And the first one is uh, to understand the adequacy of policy instruments in Navarra to enhance resource efficiency. The second observation point is uh, uh, to comment uh, and to uh, share thoughts about the extent and the sufficiency of life cycle methods in applying policy instruments. The third and last point is uh, uh, understanding if uh, the Navarre experiences can really inspire and uh, be useful to be replicated in other regions. So here is the agenda of this uh, session. As you can see, we have to manage uh, the time because uh, we have to do a lot of things uh, in, uh, as I said, uh, about uh, 45 minutes. And um, I, I thank um, Deborah that is uh, here with me and uh, she she's helping me to manage time and all the, 
the discussion that uh, will uh, be raised up during this session. So the first item on the agenda is the presentation of the Navarra policy report. Uh, of course, we, we, we won't have uh, a lot of time to get through all the very interesting instruments that are already implemented in the uh, Navarra region. Uh, we um, had some uh, overview also during the first day. Uh, but uh, now it's uh, it's good to have the opportunity to to have Raul with us uh, from the Navarra government uh, that we share with us uh, some uh, points uh, as input of uh, our discussion. Then we will start uh, an interactive uh, discussion um, going through the three observation points that I mentioned before. We will um, go through them one by one. So um, uh, I will ask uh, all the experts uh, and the, um, the partners to intervene. So we will have uh, three rounds of interventions uh, uh, around 10 minutes uh, each. Then there will be a Q&A session, 10 minutes uh, to um, allow the attendees of uh, this event to uh, my questions and to uh, maybe develop and complement uh, the discussion, uh, the previous discussion, and uh, at the end, uh, a wrap up section to recap the main points. So, I would like to get it started, and I am going to pass the floor to Raul, that is going to give us just uh, some uh, uh, feeling of what uh, is the local policy context. So, over to you, Raul. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paolo. Welcome to all partners, all presenters, attendants uh, to this third uh, journey. And I would like to share my screen. Okay, here. Okay, That's right. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, our policy, well, policy instrument related to. Uh, circular economy are five. The first of all, agenda of uh, for the development of the circular economy in Navarra 2030, with uh, six objectives from sustainable and efficient management of natural resources to contribute uh, to sustainability uh, and territorial cohesion, with three work axes. First, uh, circular culture and transversal impulse to the circular economy, results design and production, and the third one is transport, use and consumption, consumption and waste management. The second policy instrument is Waste Plan of Navarra 2017-2027, with a specific objectives very related, very Included to a uh, circular economy. First of all, is a waste prevention office is a very very important structure related to prevention and to follow the circular economy. But also there are uh, specific goals to achieve uh, in this period. For instance, 100% selective collection of bio waste, but also 70% recycled via waste, 100% uh, treatment of rice fraction, and 90% uh, of uh, recycled uh, containers, containing waste uh, selective uh, reco uh, reco uh, reco. Uh, Also creation of a public entity, an approval of the waste and tax law, and optimization of the trade and infrastructures with a carbon footprint uh, approach. Third is the regional law on waste and East tax action approval in June 2018 with measure uh, related to prevention, uh, separate waste collection of organic matter. Important, very important to establish a new taxation systems that penalize waste uh, sent to landfill and create a finalist Finalist waste fund is very important. This word finalist not uh, related to actions uh, included in this uh, regional law. A new waste entity and introducing green public procurement uh, 
the uh, recycling materials uh, such as recycled aggregate add to cost cycle analysis already included in the public contract law. Next policy instrument is the public contract law approved in April 2018 that this uh, foreign law includes the concept for the first time this life cycle and life cycle cost, uh, for instance, internal uh, to external environmental factors. It's necessary to take into account the economic value, be uh, quantified and verified, but furthermore, it's necessary uh, calculation methods, general methods, not uh, applicable, applicable to a single contracting procedure. It must be objective and not imply excessive effort. It's a, it's a problem, yes. And the last one is the climate change roadmap 2030-2050 called CLINA. This roadmap establishes um, uh, both mitigation objectives and adaptation objectives following the European strategy. And this uh, roadmap uh, follows with a European project, Life and Adapta, uh, for to, to 2025. And according to this European strategy, Navarra is working now on development of uh, Navarra Horizon 2030 energy plan. A highlights of our short SWOT analysis, uh, we, need, we, we need to improve regional plans and programs, for instance, lack of coherence and comprehensive approach, uh, approach to administration, no incentives, uh, lack of public procurement strategy, and absence of tax deduction. But in relation to regulatory framework, we have not an unified regulatory framework with methodologies on LCA. No development of the contract law this is very important for, because uh, there are an absence in general use tools and simple application. This is very difficult for, for us to, 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 to give an, a good application and need for knowledge about LCA tools. It, or also frequent change in the approach. And we need to develop, for instance, in public procurement, contracting, purchase of materials and very important to hire methodology, methodology in public procurement to include, include uh, LCA or the results of the LCA approach. It's necessary to define obligation in the approach in condition, for, 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 for instance, in waste plan in Navarra, infrastructures, authorization to companies. It's necessary to define what aspects uh, the calculation that cut from being in waste management uh, facilities is mandatory, is mandatory and for what purpose? With uh, fun, with fun is necessary to define the circular criteria, for instance, in approval of projects related to these funds and in, re in relation to circular economy agenda, necessary to develop and concretion. And finally, climate change law in management of public events, for instance, for, for waste management. And that is Paul, thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you very much, Raul. Uh, thank you very much for your comprehensive presentation. And I think that uh, it's impressive to see how the Navarra region is already uh, there with a lot of uh, instruments, a lot of uh, strategic plans, uh, and also in different, uh, let's say, uh, time frames so or in the medium, long term. I think that it's, uh, it's wonderful. So um, I think that now it's time to start uh, the to ping pong, let's say, with uh, the partners and the experts. <laughs> um, so Raúl, uh, be ready to maybe I will address you some of the points that uh, we are going to touch. But uh, uh, I would like to thank the partners that already submitted some uh, observations about the questions that I was mentioned before. And so let's start with the first point that is, uh, so um, let's start uh, a discussion about the adequacy of policy instruments in Navarra to enhance resource efficiency. Of course, uh, we have to be focused on uh, 
the purpose of the project, so pay attention to the life cycle uh, approaches. So it's my pleasure to, to start uh, with, um, to share with you the comment received uh, by the Satakunta region. I don't know if uh, Elisa or Pekka are there. Maybe uh, if you can uh, turn on your microphone and just uh, comment on this slide so that we can uh, hear from you your thoughts and then uh, maybe we can elaborate uh, further. So Pekka or Elisa, if you are there, over to you. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. 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 Yeah, we are Elisa and Pekka. We are both here. Good to see you. See you. Uh, do you want want us to comment on? Yeah, if you want, just to maybe speak about this uh, this slide so that uh, it's better to hear your voice rather than just to read it. Uh, and okay. then maybe since there are some uh, questions also at the end, we can maybe uh, ask Raul to comment them. But uh, please give us uh, some uh, some words about it. Okay. Yeah. These are these are just. Uh, some uh, very briefly some uh, some thinking behind the, when when we read the read the agenda so uh, about the instruments so generally uh, the policy instruments what you selected are I think that they are very strong and, and, and such um, just within the just in the core uh, agenda of the project so uh, so this was of course very very good um, just what I was thinking and I think that this is the ca same case what we have uh, in Finland and and generally in these policy instruments that very very uh, not very often they have any numerical goals they are just quite uh, broad uh, papers uh, so which might make it a bit difficult to to how to how to really to but because I, I don't know how to influence the policy instruments and, and how to really to uh, by, might might be difficult to monitor the the impacts of of, of uh, then how how we can uh, how we can get uh, life cycle thinking into these uh, policy instruments. But maybe if, maybe somebody else can then comment on that. Um, also, some some uh, of course in this because they are broad broad policy instruments, they might have some overlapping overlapping uh, themes in there, but uh, that was one notion. And, uh, um, and of course, at the moment, I think generally very much they are focusing on carbon footprinting uh, calculations and, and things like that. And, and this is also the case in Finland. And, 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 and uh, sometimes it is not so clear then uh, how we can how we adjust the LCA in those uh, carbon footprinting calculations. Mm -hmm. This is some ideas what uh, came to 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 my mind when I read this. Th thank you very much, Pekka. Actually, um, it's very interesting, and also I would like to say that it's uh, wonderful to to be here together to discuss uh, this aspect because it's wonderful to have the opportunity to have different regions talking about uh, the local context and so we can uh, get inspired from uh, each other so it's uh, wonderful and you actually touched and raised up uh, some uh, very interesting points i would say uh, two the one the first one is uh, numerical goals i think it's uh, very much interesting and also maybe i think that the life cycle uh, approaches could help also to justify why we, a region uh, uh, is setting uh, specific uh, targets and why 70%, 80%, for instance. And so it could be also a way to justify and to really set and fix uh, numerical goals, but also, of course, uh, monitoring uh, the, 
the, the achievement of uh, such a goals. And then also the, the, the point that you raised up about overlapping things, I think that it's, uh, it's interesting because actually I also noticed this uh, uh, listen to listening to Raul when uh, we thought about different uh, policy instruments, uh, especially when it comes to waste management, circular economy, climate change. Uh, they are uh, very much, uh, they can be overlapped in a way, but also um, we can uh, see how uh, there are a lot of synergies uh, among them. So I think that uh, overlapping and synergies can be two aspects of the same, two face of the same coin, let's say. And then I would like to, to stress also the point about uh, social dimension. I think it's very interesting. And maybe Raul, I don't know if you you want just to intervene briefly about this point, if you, because I think that it's uh, very much interesting to inspire also the life cycle approach with the social, the social pillar, since it's one of the three pillars of the sustainability. So I don't know, Raul, if you have a specific comment or maybe we can also later on uh, yes. throughout the project uh, approach yes. this topic yeah just, just you. Uh, thank you to Becca and to uh, violent uh, yes for us the problem is uh, i agree with with, with him uh, it's necessary to involve other departments in government in government of navarra because uh, for, uh, a few years ago the circular economic thinking uh, they thought uh, was uh, related with environmental issues, not uh, only with research or others, departments, social or uh, contracts, or purchase, uh, so on. And the, for us, for us nowadays, uh, it's necessary to involve these uh, people and uh, because the, the, the circular economy agenda is uh, related to all departments. Uh, there are a lot of actions inside related to them, related to other plans uh, from government of Navarra, not only based in waste management plan. No, the agenda is a, a, transversal, a, a transversal policy instrument. Mm -hmm. Okay, th thank you very much, Robert. and this is a very interesting point since uh, one of the objectives of uh, such a project is also to break uh, silos, uh, so yes, start uh, cross cooperation between among different uh, departments. Okay, cool. So I would like to also just uh, last point because I think that the last point uh, excuse, uh, raised excuse up me. by uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah. I, I agree with Raúl. I, I think the, the the circular economy is circular. It's not only in, in our experiences, uh, you are doing the development and the implementation on, of action, not because the uh, regulation uh, say you must do that, you don't uh, have uh, uh, possibilities to put the water in the, in the river. No, no, it's not the aspect of control. Festival, you look uh, where you are. Uh, that is my first uh, uh, expression uh, the, 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 when you are doing the LCA, and, and that is your photography that you, you have there. And after that, uh, if, if you want uh, to get new uh, activities, you must do twice the, the, the work. One for you to now, which will be the, the best way to, to get uh, the new application, the new processes, and another one to uh, uh, to demonstrate in the different department of the government if you are clean in water, you are clean in, in, in emission. I, I think uh, the conception of the circular economy in the in the uh, in, in, in the companies. Uh, needs a circular conception of regulatory aspect and the administration of uh, activities. I, I, I think, eh? I agree with you, Raul, yes, that's important, it's very important. Okay, thank you, Eusebio. 
Thank you very much for complimenting, and actually, I agree with uh, with your point. And it's uh, it's nice also to to see how uh, private companies can inspire the the action of the the public authority and vice versa. So I think it's uh, it's it's nice. So um, let's move on to the to the. I'm sorry, I have to run a bit because we have a lot of uh, points to raise. So I would like to go to uh, the next observation that we received. Uh, from the Kaunas uh, uh, University in Lithuania. So I'm going to ask uh, uh, Yolanta if you can turn on your microphone just to say a few words about your comment so that we can uh, elaborate on it. Please over okay. to you. Can you hear me? Yes, very well. Thanks. Okay. Hi, Yolanta. Good to see you. <laughs> nice to meet you again everybody and um, of course uh, thank you very much for those nice for good practice presentations and what was said by uh eusebio guys Lafuente. Uh, his last words was that they are doing uh, everything uh, what what is um, important for the company and what we experienced with our um, uh, companies that they always will do if, if it is economically first of all feasible so it is very important so but my comment regarding the policy instruments and uh, it is really very great as i said that uh, they have developed so nice plans and strategies we are doing now and we are developing in our country as well and uh, plan for the circular economy and uh, we have developed also some action plans on sustainable development on energy efficiency and renewables and uh, some other plans so but uh, still uh, thank you raul you updated me <laughs> sorry for that but you updated on the policy instruments but still i have some contradictions because from your from the Navarra policy report, what you have presented today, I see that you also indicated that there are the, the place to improve regional plan because no initiatives or support for eco innovation, LCA, eco design product or environmental declarations. So it was very interesting for me uh, because I understood that you have already in place LCA methods, but still you also lack those methods as well involved in, in some policy instruments. So my question was maybe about which methods are used and included in certain policy instruments in your region or, in, or if those instruments are national or regional only. Thank you. Thank you, Yolanta, for your comment. I don't know, Raul, if you want to reply to Yolanta. I think that the, one of the, the scope of this uh, project is to to really implement something about life cycle approach. So maybe if it's not there, we maybe hopefully we will be there after this project. But I don't know, Raul, if you want to comment a bit more. Yes, thank you very much, Yolanta. Uh, yes, it's true. We it's possible. We only if, uh, put uh, the carbon footprint uh, calculation then there are another methods and but we expect uh, for instance related to law about uh, waste and extraction we have created a found uh, 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 the scope of this found is to apply the actions uh, put inside is uh, this law and I don't have a, 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 a clear idea about the, the method. Yes, the, the, the people are uh, working in public procurement say the same uh, aspect. They can't improvise LCA method, involve risk, taking in account factors, uh, favor or certain company or group of companies in they are not uh, in this in, in this moment uh, foraging for implementation uh, are LCA methods specific we don't know we don't know the moment yes okay Th thank you Raul actually uh, competition fair competition and uh, procurement uh, are 
uh, actually a very important point and uh, maybe life cycle approaches and throughout the project we definitely have to stress this point to really turn into concrete uh, policy actions uh, such uh, ideas okay. so okay. i'm uh, uh, i've spotted uh, adam from lotsky region that is the uh, yeah because uh, i received it. thank you very much for your uh, hi good to see you hello, hello. and uh, we, we received your comment about uh, the policy instruments in our so uh, over to you to maybe give us some words and uh, your thoughts about it yes uh, uh, hello everyone um, uh, me and, and Tom and Marta uh, from the region um, submitted those kind of uh, 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 our observation, uh, and it's uh, it's uh, it's based on on uh, like a like a sentence. Good luck to you, Navara. Uh, go for it, Navara. It, it will be really okay. But Thank me, you. Per me personally, uh, have a most in interesting in uh, two. Uh, two elements of, of this uh, policy. Um, uh, I mentioned uh, waste uh, permission office and uh, waste found. Um, and my first question is um, uh, waste uh, waste found uh, could be operating uh, in what way? Uh, I mean, uh, this is uh, the money. The money um, uh, uh, who will go for what? I mean. Uh, they are, are they targeted to uh, develop a new uh, environmental uh, friendly technologies or are they um, targeted to uh, let's say um, environment recovery soil recovery uh, water recovery etc and um, my second question is uh, waste uh, permission office uh, i mean um, what is the competence uh, of this uh, of this institution, are they uh, have a um, control um, uh, competence, and uh, do they allowed to enter the facilities and control production and recycling processes, uh, and what are the um, annual budgets of this institution, and that's for all for my uh, my side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, very interesting points. Uh, I don't know, Raul, uh, because I think that there are two points. One is about uh, how to benefit from the fund uh, that you are, uh, let's say, uh, creating through different economical instruments. And the second one is about uh, licensing and permits. Uh, so, um, uh, yes, you, uh, uh, yeah, thank, over thank, to you. Thank you for your questions. Uh, the first of all is about uh, uh, the act the funds related to the law. The, the law uh, fix uh, very clear, very clearly uh, the use of these funds. The funds are finalist and to use, for instance, improve recycling, improve uh, eco design, improve uh, recovery collection, uh, excuse me, uh, selective uh, re uh, collection. Uh, improve uh, more control and traceability. Uh, uh, pay by you through uh, a lot of prevent. Yes, of course, a lot of action. And nowadays we are uh, fix, uh, fixing the way, way what are the, the 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 actions in three different ways. Um, Founds of municipality or a waste of municipality with domestic waste, industrial waste, and a construction and demolition waste. These three, uh, these three ways in, involve different uh, funds to promote at the end. Excuse me, what is the third area? Uh, you mentioned municipality, industry, and and a uh, uh, construction and demolition waste. Okay. Yes. Uh, on the second hand, uh, it's not a, a permission office, it's a prevention, prevention, waste prevention office. Okay. It's related only, only, <laughs> no more, uh, with uh, all actions related to prevention and uh, uh, related to a, a circular economy action inside the waste plan from Navarra. 
for instance, it's necessary to uh, uh, promotion actions, uh, to uh, to work uh, yeah. workshops, to etc. Uh, only only is a prevention office, not permission. Uh, permission is inside our department, but here promote. Uh, for instance, we need to improve uh, the collection, the, the, the separate collection from organic waste. Yes, we need to improve with this office and we work together with uh, Commonwealth uh, in Navarra, Pamplona Commonwealth, um, uh, consortium and waste management. So it's rather a, a soft competence uh, for, yes. this, uh, for this institution. Yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Adam, for the input and thank you, Raul, for the answers. And, and actually, I would like to say that it's very nice that you have uh, a prevention, a waste prevention office, because it's not that common to have it. And also, in terms of strategy, it means a lot, in my opinion. So, we can move on to the next. Uh, uh, point and the next comment that we received from the um, from Slovenia I don't know if uh, Albin is there um, it would be nice uh, if you open your microphone and just comment uh, on uh, this slide Albin over to you I don't know probably Albin is not okay, ah, okay. Good to yeah. see you, to, to listen to you, actually, not to, to see, but uh, to listen to you. Yes, thank you very much. So, uh, first of all, I would like to say congratulations to the colleagues in Navarra for this, for the content of this document on policy instruments. As I wrote uh, yesterday, uh, while having a look at the document, it's very, op it's very optimistically oriented and very ambitious. So I expressed in my comment only two concerns, actually. So one of them is uh, regarding the development of technologies that will enable uh, the replacement of fossil fuels in the very near future. So I am a bit conservative in this aspect. And the second thing is that since the, um, the document itself is very ambitious, so I think that also it will require to uh, secure sufficient financial uh, sources, let's say, to implement then uh, all the actions which are uh, which are described in the document. Okay, so that was my comment. Thank, thank you, Albim. Thank you very much for your comment and, and actually also for your pragmatic uh, uh, comment that I think it's very important to uh, yeah to 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 turn into reality also this uh, this analysis. So thank you very much. I don't know, Raul. Um, do you have uh, something specifically to uh, to comment on this, or we can uh, move on? To yes. Uh, okay. Yes. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, Alvin, for your observations um, um, about the financial resources. We started uh, in in twenty eighteen. Is the the first year we started with a, with a a fund. Not with we with, with, uh, we have um, a taxes um, related to a landfill uh, of waste, and this year is the first year we started. We will start uh, about uh, with, with this fund. The, uh, we have uh, more or less three uh, three million uh, euro mm -hmm. to. Uh, resources to uh, actions uh, in relation to this uh, to this uh, chapter article uh, of, the, of the law and I I, I, need, I, I, not, I, I don't know if it's enough or, or not but it's, it's a, a very important amount to uh, to um, to apply different actions uh, prevention and uh, increase uh, the recovery and so on and the other one uh, the other one is about the renewable ones uh, yes uh, in, in navarra is a uh, um, i have an, a, a region they have a lot of renewable 
uh, uh, industries, renewable, like uh, eolic and other one, and uh, that they use uh, to replace fossil fuels. And I think the new uh, law in climate claim change improve uh, this replacement uh, nowadays, this uh, new law is an, in our parliament and we expect uh, is uh, increase uh, the replacement of fossil fuels. I think is the, the, the principal um, policy instrument we will have in, in this year or next year, no more. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Raul, and thank you very much, Alvin. So I, I just got some uh, comment from uh, Elsa uh, from Simbar, Portugal. So maybe Elsa, can I ask you to turn on your microphone and uh, tell us? Over to you, Elsa. Okay, thank you, Paul, so much. I was having trouble to unmute everyone um, I also had some comments uh, they are mainly mostly um, already discussed but uh, perhaps I would just like to stretch one or two points um, that uh, first of all it was quite an impressive work so congrats on that um, I should like to point out the strong focus that we could identify on circular economy. And um, I would just like to ask, uh, I don't know, to Raul, perhaps, um, uh, to elaborate a little uh, how our economic and social impacts um, being addressed. And uh, perhaps also, how do you see that LCA can contribute to the overall goals. Okay, thank you very much Elsa for your points. I don't know Raul, um, if you can uh, react uh, right now or... Uh... Yes, uh, thank you Elsa okay. for your comments and uh, sure, we we are thinking LCA methods, so if we approach, will contribute to improve our uh, political framework uh, and uh, five uh, instrument, political instrument, I uh, had said before, uh, improve, uh, sure, with uh, LCA method. Yes, yes, of course. Thank you. Thank you, Elsa, and thank you, Raul. So, we can move on to the next contribution that we received. Uh, it comes from Fritz. So, Fritz, uh, can you comment on this? Over to you. Okay. Let me just turn myself on. Good to see you, Fritz. Yeah, it's nice to be back, Paolo, and it's nice to be in touch with everyone else as well. And uh, it's a good overview by Raoul that uh, I think really summarised this situation very well. But I also enjoyed the two videos, and particularly the one by Eusebio on the olive oil uh, initiative, which I think illustrated very well how an integrated plant like that is much more viable than some plant that's making just a single product. We can come back to that. Okay, in terms of peer review, I did have a number of comments on it. Uh, it, uh, it was mostly in a congratulatory way. I think Navarro is doing a lot and Having worked in government, I understand well what the challenges are in moving forward on such an agenda. And the more we hear from Raoul and his colleagues, the more we realise how much his work is actually being done. That said, uh, my observation is also that much of the focus seems to be on climate change, uh, energy, greenhouse gas reduction, climate change. It's not the only sustainable development goal. Uh, we do need to look a little bit more broadly sometimes in terms of water management, land management, social issues and so forth. So if I have any comment to say to as a guide for moving forward, it's that 
the integration of additional sustainable development goals as we move forward uh, would round off the agenda very nicely. Uh, I also want to uh, comment on Raoul's, uh, Raoul's comment that circular economy is not something that is specific to the waste management sector. And we do have the experience that when there's one government department or one company or one industry sector that wants to capture circular economy, they kill it. Circular economy is a broad stakeholder societal movement and any attempt to capture it by one of the partners is ine inevitably killing it. So I tend to agree with Raoul on that, that it needs to remain out there as a broad government policy where all the departments have a stake in it. Okay, at the end, uh, Paolo, I have some general comments to that I don't want to deal with right now because you're in the process now of looking at the policy review. So okay. I'll, leave it, I'll leave it at that for the moment. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fritz. Thank you. Thank Fritz. you very much. Yes, thank you, Fritz. Totally, totally agree with you. Yes, we need to involve the departments because there are more SDG goals, goals and to need to improve them. Yes, yes, totally agree. Okay, thank you both. So um, I would like just to uh, open the microphone to Rami from Zero Waste Scotland that uh, he is ready to provide some uh, thoughts and ideas on this. I thank you, thank you very much, Rami, to to be with yes. us. Um, can so, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, very well. Okay. So over to you, Rami. Uh, um, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks, Raúl, for you know sharing with us and your plan for taking Navarra forward in this journey. It's really exciting, you know, policies, really nice, you know, clear goals. Although, as you know, some of the members mentioned, they are too ambitious and you have, you cover a wide range of, you know, areas. And obviously in this case, probably what I would think might be useful to consider is to have a sort of a roadmap where you need to have a prioritization pro process that you try to prioritize these goals based on their benefits. And in that case, obviously, the life carbon footprinting and life cycle assessment can play a huge role in trying to see which policies are more important than others. And this actually takes me to my next um, observation, which is about you know, life cycle assessment, because it's clearly from your work that it will be a huge role um, in the work moving forward. And I'm not sure if at your department or uh, in, in your region, if you have a dedicated team that's responsible in doing all that technical crashing number stuff when it comes to life cycle assessment, because this is like a really, you know, quite complicated field of science. So you need sort of that expertise. It's like similar to finance and accounting because you need an accountant in every company. But at the same time, as we are moving from talking about recycling rates to carbon and other environmental indicators, we need to have that expertise locally. Or another option is to have collaboration. And that's something I mentioned on the first day when I presented um, at this conference. It's all about collaboration. So you can maybe collaborate with other regions within Spain or beyond Spain. So, because in, uh, actually also that will help you to cover the cost to have, you know, that expertise. Um, so my final remark, I, like, like you talked about procurement, green procurement, and some of you also mentioned that, and it's quite challenging um, to do it. For me and how we do it here, and the way we think about it for us, you know, it, like obviously when it comes to life cycle assessment and green procurement, this stage needs to be done before issuing the procurement documents. Like as you know, someone who will procure a service or a product, you need to think about your options and then you decide what you want to put in your like bids. Like for example, talking about, um, let's say you are a public institution and you want to procure like furniture for your office. And obviously you can't go and ask contractors to give you to do life cycle assessment of different of their options, because otherwise you will have like 10 different studies and with 10 different methodologies. So it will be really difficult to assess at that case. 
but the way we look at it that you know internally if you have your own like, environmental officer teams they can look at different scenarios and maybe they will come up with the idea that you will ask you like in the bed like ask for furniture you will ask for maybe you can put a condition that the furniture should be made from at least 70 percent wood because we know like when it comes to carbon impacts wood is better than metal so having a wooden chair a chair made of wood is better than a one made from metal so the lca things come before procurement so once you make decision then you put it in your documents and then you share it to contractors and then they will do the pricing the normal pricing process based on what you have in your specs yeah so but overall it's really really exciting you know policies um on the base I, they look ambitious some of them but again like i'm not sure what the current situation because as you can see with the west plan of navara it you have it from 2017 to 2027 and now we are in 2020 so it's been three years so i don't know how much progress has been made but yeah all the best uh with this raul and yeah these are my thoughts for now thank you very much rami very interesting points and uh, and thank you also for uh, to to recall the roadmap because actually it's uh, one of the project deliverable at the end of uh, first phase so yeah it, it, it won't be so wide because uh, it will be just about the life cycle approach through this project but uh, in a way it's something that could be maybe broadened also for for the scope to implement the strategies and also thank you for your comment on the procurement just for your information, we will have um, another TLJ. I think the TLJ4 uh, focused on uh, procurement. So maybe it will be our pleasure to invite you to, to, this, uh, to this event, uh, but we, we keep you posted because I think that uh, your point about uh, how to set the criteria in the public tenders and public procurement through life cycle approaches, it's very, very interesting. So yeah, we will have time to elaborate on this. Okay, thank you very much, Rami. Uh, we can uh, maybe, yeah, someone who would like to intervene. Uh, excuse me, Paolo, only yes. a little thing about uh, yes. all the goals yes. of the waste plan. Yes, it would be um, ambitious, or I don't know, because our position in, in relation to the other uh, regions from Spain are very, very well, very, very good because we are in the first, second position, recovery, collection. Yes, we are well positioned in that. And uh, that is the reason for the, our goals are all seems ambitious. Yes, but we need to improve. Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Raul. So we, I think that we have to run a bit because we have uh, just 10 minutes left. So we have uh, still uh, two observation points to, to go through. So I would like to start uh, with the first. Uh, so the, um, just to, um, to recall um, what is about the second observation point, it's about extend and sufficiency of life cycle methods in applying policy instruments. Rami already gave us some uh, points on this. But I would like to, maybe I, if I may, I, I would like to ask uh, all the, the partners to, to intervene with a short uh, uh, comment so that we can go through them uh, in due time. So I would like to ask um, Pekka or Elisa to open the microphone and uh, just uh, give us some few words about this comment that we received uh, from them. So Pekka, Elisa, are you there? Yes, we are here. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, uh, well, this is, uh, I don't know if I need to comment much uh, for us based on this. So it's not, so this is to maybe some, it's not so easy to, to identify of course, because there is a lot of uh, different uh, life cycle methods uh, that are available, and and you can use that in many ways. So, so uh, what is the behind the curtain in these different policies, and and uh, and how much they really are 
already in use. So it's uh, at least it, it seems to be not so not so very clear. Uh, and uh, and well, it seems to be a lot of like I, I said earlier that the, the emphasis is is quite a lot on the carbon footprint calculations and 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 the analysis of that, which is of course important, but. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's just a few observations for me. Okay, thank you very much, Pekka. Indeed, this uh, carbon footprint is something very much in the focus of uh, the life cycle approach of Navarra. Maybe it's uh, it's good to have the opportunity to broaden a bit uh, the scope of the life cycle approach. So, thank you very much, Pekka. Uh, Raul, if you want to intervene, uh, otherwise, I uh, would like to, to, to just uh, uh, make the other partners intervene. Maybe at the end, Raul, you can comment uh, on the on the whole uh, round. Okay? No, uh, only yeah, thank you please. very much for all observation, all partners. Uh, very, uh, they are very useful for us and to improve uh, day by day with the uh, with LCA methods to improve our policies. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Raúl. So maybe I don't know, Yolanda, if you want to comment on uh, this uh, slide. Uh, it's about uh, again uh, carbon footprinting. Very much. I think I will just yeah. repeat you. what was said. Uh, thank you, Paolo. But I think I will repeat just what what was said by Pekka as well, and and what okay. was uh, obviously we saw that a lot of uh, footprinting. Um, uh, used as a method, and we saw from the GP uh, today that uh, LCA was used, but still there are, for me, <laughs> maybe lack of information, or maybe I was, wasn't was so uh, clear and specific uh, analyzing uh, the documents and finding where other tools were used. So I think it's the same okay. as what was said already. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Yolanta. But it's good to, to see a convergence in the in the comments. So it's uh, always nice to see your comment. So let's move to the next one. Um, Adam, can I ask you if you want to comment uh, on uh, this observation? If you have something to add, Adam, over okay. to you. Okay, I, I just have a brief comment. Um, I just want to say that. Um, uh, my heart uh, belongs to Biosason um, uh, today. Um, it was a wonderful uh, presentation of knowledge, of engineering knowledge and technological knowledge. Uh, I just was impressed that um, uh, from olive extraction, uh, the, the, there is uh, so much uh, possibilities and technologies from uh, from uh, from organic uh, products to nanotechnology encapsulation. It was very impressed. And uh, I think uh, we should all um, um, have, a, have an inspiration and uh, accumulate, uh, to gain from, from this accumulation of knowledge, uh, from the technological engineering knowledge to, um, to analyze it and, and to uh, as much as we can uh, implement this knowledge uh, in this system of, uh, of circular economy. Uh, bright ideas, uh, good luck to you, Navara. Go for it. Thank, thank you very much, Adam, for your uh, positive and optimistic comment. Um, and uh, actually, it was impressive the, the presentation uh, of the, yeah, the site visit. So, yeah, I. Fully support your point. Thank you, uh, Alan. Uh, sorry, uh, but uh, I agree with you, <laughs> your comments. But uh, Thank you, uh, two questions. In my opinion, uh, we are very open to uh, send you information, how to do uh, everything. And uh, another question about the use of of the LCA tool or from uh, carbon fruit uh, print tool. Uh, there are different, uh, but uh, uh, in, in our experience, in the LCA, you must do in, in the free aspect of the sustainability, in the economy, in the uh, uh, environment or ecology, and in the ecosocial. 
And if you are doing all what do you mean by, sorry, sorry, Eusebio, what do you mean by eco social? Uh, it's very interesting. <laughs> yes, Those, it, it, it was a, a, a no very easy, uh, uh, for instance, uh, because uh, we we uh, had the uh, the idea to, uh, when when we are uh, when we were uh, developing the tool uh, about the contribution for instance in uh, of a person month uh, to work to production and and that but another question was how to reflect the healthy activities the healthy uh, of the product in uh, in years of life of person that is the the way and and, and the tool uh, 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 and you're in this this kind of combination uh, how many uh, light uh, years more have you if you uh, are uh, consuming for instance uh, uh, oil from uh, uh, well, uh, without comment with the uh, no uh, organic and no with uh, and without polyphenols how many years less uh, have you the the spectrum of uh, life, life if you are taking another one. It's, okay. it's complex, it's complex. Eh? Okay. So it's like, like a kind of a um, clinical laboratory. You you observe the, the impact yes. of uh, social impact uh, from your products, from consuming your products. Yes, that's it. Brilliant, thank you. But, 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 but that opens you another uh, way, another vision of the product. You you must uh, product uh, 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 product not only to uh, to increase your uh, uh, your body and, and growth. <laughs> uh, uh, the products must be designed to have healthy condition, a uh, healthy contribution for your health. Okay, so that is why I I I I, I understand the, your your. Your name from Basque language, uh, double health. Okay. I, uh, second, yes, uh, that's true. <laughs> second spot for me. Thank you. Thank you, Xavier. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, you both, for for your comments. And actually, it's uh, it's wonderful to see how broad uh, could be the scope of uh, the life cycle uh, implementation in in, in such uh, industries. So yeah, very interesting. So the, the, the tool is open for you. Eh? Uh, we can send you and. Um, uh, we are doing this kind of uh, contribution with other companies. Uh, as, as I say, we have a part of uh, consulting, and but we are very open to send you information and to do that. Eh? Just, wonderful. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> wonderful. And it's uh, it's the scope also of these, uh, of these events to exchange uh, knowledge and experience. So we are uh, yeah on the same uh, page, let's say. So um, let's move on to the to the next uh, comment that we receive from um, Albin, Slovenia. I don't know if you want to to comment on it. Um, if you want to spend uh, some few words, uh, yes. Albin, over, over to you. I will be brief. Uh, so our, uh, by starting the uh, good practices from Navara, so I could see that the. Obviously, the LCS approach was done accordingly to the standardized procedure, so I think that it was very well employed. And, but, and regarding the presentations today, I might say that I enjoyed very much the second presentation where the example on uh, LCA utilization was demonstrated and also then all these calculations uh, uh, regarding the calculations for carbon footprint. So thank you on this. Thank you very much, Albin. And congratulations, Eusebio. You, you did a very, very good job today. So um, just to move on the next comment uh, we received about the observation on the use of life cycle methods in Navarra. Fritz, uh, if you want to spend uh, some few words uh, on your comment, uh, please, over to you. Thanks, Paolo. Uh, yes. I'd like to bring out a couple of points which were quite positive in uh, some of the presentations, but also in the Navarra situation. 
In particular, uh, I'd like to start by reiterating what I said yesterday, that we need to think of LCA and life cycle methods as an investment, not as a cost. And I think the second case study, the second uh, field visit we had exemplified this uh, enormously, that through the use of life cycle assessment, uh, it was possible to further develop the product line, not only streamline the operation of the process itself, but to develop new products, new markets and so forth. So this is really illustrating the power of life cycle methodologies uh, in terms of moving forward into a new era. The other thing I want to mention is that the much of the focus so far has been on carbon offset, uh, carbon uh, management, uh, energy management, greenhouse gas. There's a lot more to life cycle methodologies and a lot more to, to uh, sustainable development goals than that. One thing I want, I want to share one slide of my screen, if I could. Can you put me on a screen share, please, Paolo? Yeah, I can stop sharing. I don't know if I can do more. Maybe you are now allowed to. Yeah, this is the one I want. Okay, great. Okay, can you see the diagram on social LCA? Yes, can you put it in the presentation mode so that it's a bit uh, larger? Just a minute. Uh, where are we? In the, where's the presentation mode? Uh, if you press uh, F5, uh, you should be... Uh, F5. Should be it. Just a minute. Uh, I'm not sure how successful this is going to be. Oh, la, la. This is going everywhere. What, are, what I wanted to show... Can you see that screen? Not uh, now, but... No. Uh, no. Okay. Yeah. And we'll go back. What, what I wanted to show was the screen on social life cycle assessment. And I think it's been mentioned several times in a limited sort of way. But the use of life, social life cycle assessment, health and safety, remuneration, working conditions, equal opportunities, knowledge and capital, new products, participation is really quite powerful and it's an essential sustainable development goal these days. So I just want to encourage the use of that now. Uh, just a minute. I'm having trouble with my screens again. All right. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that the fact that much of the emphasis has been on assessment, uh, carbon footprints, life cycle assessment. What is also important is to keep an eye on the life cycle management tools. There hasn't been so much mention of that. And yet in some of the Navara presentations and some of the Navara information, they demonstrated how they converted the assessment information into management tools, use of echo labels, use of environmental product declarations, echo design. In the Lifecycle Toolbox, there's a whole series of Lifecycle management tools. And it would be good to have some more emphasis on how the management tools are being used to achieve policy goals. Uh, that's all I really wanted to say. Uh, but let me just see if I can go back to Screen sharing has stopped. Am I still online, Paolo? Yeah. Okay. Oh, here we you are. You can stop. Uh, no, no, yeah. uh, yep. Okay. Okay. So, Th thank so you very much for your comments. And and actually, it's very much interesting your your last point about uh, how to to pass from uh, assessment uh, to management to so since our objective is to to really lead to uh, policy action, it's very much interesting. Your point. And you'll find in the RAB from Navara, uh, there's two, the separation of the life cycle methodologies into assessment and into management. And I think this is an example that I would hold up to the other partners also to start thinking not only of broader assessment tools, but also how to apply the management, life cycle management tools that lead to some sort of policy improvement. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it, it's something that we need to stress uh, throughout the project. Okay, thank you very much, Fritz. So I'm trying to uh, share again my screen. I don't know if uh, maybe from, okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks Navara team for your help. 
Okay, so I think that uh, since we are uh, running out of time, um, if you agree, I, I received also some comment from Elsa. Uh, I don't know, Elsa, if you want to uh, say a few words or if you are okay, if we move on, uh, let me know. Let okay, me thank over you, to you. Yeah. Um, or pretty much already covered, ah, okay, so okay. I think you should move okay. on. Thank you, Paolo. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Elsa. So um, I would like just to um, show you uh, some slides that we received about the third observation point. So how the Navarre experience could inspire and could be replicated in other regions. So, for instance, uh, I'm sorry if uh, I don't you make you intervene, but maybe at the end we can have a final round of comments so that if you want to add something, you will have uh, some time to do it. So, um, I think that uh, in general, uh, the feeling about the, uh, the opportunity to replicate and to transfer the experience uh, in terms of good practices uh, in Navarre in other region is quite high. So, it's nice and uh, um, it's a uh, comment that um, something real similar from all the, the partners. So I, I think that we can uh, sum up uh, on this uh, this point uh, that uh, there are, there's some potential and, it, and actually it's something that uh, it should be stressed during the project. So we want to exchange good practices that uh, to, uh, to be good practices, they should be also uh, they should have also a high potential transparency to other regions. So it's it's very much interesting that actually in Navarra is the case. So um, I would like to just uh, move on to uh, the last uh, uh, item of uh, this session, that is a uh, wrap up, uh, the, the question and answer session, uh, sorry. So maybe I, uh, I ask the Navarra team uh, if uh, they received some specific questions from the attendees so that we can address them to to the speakers, uh, or uh, or we can uh, just uh, move on to the final round of comments. Let me know, David or Sandra. I don't know if uh, you said something. Hi, Paolo. Hi, hi Paolo. Uh, yeah, hi, hi, David. Close your mic. Yeah, hi, Paolo. Sorry about that. We have two mics open in a, in a loop. Yes, we haven't yeah. received any any questions in in okay. okay, so you're you're free okay. to to continue. Okay, thank you very much, David. So we can move to the wrap up uh, session. So uh, here I just put some of the main points that uh, I noticed uh, uh, getting through your comments. But I would like to maybe uh, ask uh, all the participants of this session to have a final uh, round of comments. So we can start uh, uh, from uh, Pekka and Elisa from, uh, um, from Finland, uh, so maybe if you can turn on your microphone, if you have uh, some final uh, comment uh, on this session, it could be great. So over to you, Pekka or Elisa. Thank you. Um, well, Navarra's examples are, are, are very nice, very high quality. I think uh, uh, wish we would have been there to to have to have on site the experience of of your your. Uh, your experiences on this and, and, and examples. Uh, like I said, uh, like uh, the last point that comment on the what we can obtain really to obtain from Navarra ex uh, uh, examples, uh, we need to have a deep discussions with our local authorities and, 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 and stakeholders yet to, to analyze examples yet what we haven't been able to do, to do it so far so so we will continue with that so but uh, very positive uh, experience so far okay th thank you thank you very much becca for your final uh, comment so we can move on to yolanta from uh, Kaunas university in lithuania so yolanta if you can switch on your microphone over to you for a final comment. Okay, thank you very much, Paolo. Yes, I, I can that just um, 
thank you for our team for all your group and we had uh, really nice uh, study visits without testing of wine of course but uh, but still it is really interesting and uh, as i said uh, in my third comment and observation that uh, we need to discuss with our with our stakeholders and uh, what was said by fritz uh, and i really support this that management tools are most important uh, to improve the policy instruments and actually we yesterday we discussed with our stakeholder, May stakeholder, Ministry of Economy and Innovation, and their question was, uh, what were the mistakes or maybe lessons learned to avoid and, and to, to really uh, get the sometimes bad practices as they work better than good practices. So it means that how should regions start and how they should uh, start to use the management tools and of course i understood that we really also have in the region uh, those eco labels and environmental management systems but life cycle assessments as such or some life cycle tools are not in place well, thank you very much and thank you for all of for moderating Thank, thank you very much, Yolanta. I would like to move to the next one. I think it's Adam. So, Adam, over to you for a final comment. Adam, you, you just need to turn on your microphone. Sorry. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, perfectly. Um, thank you. Uh, I would like to once again um, uh, thank uh, Fritz and, and Eusebio uh, for uh, for um, uh, stressing the, um, our atten um, attention uh, for uh, <clears throat> uh, social uh, impact of uh, uh, LCA and uh, uh, those family of uh, instrument and tool to, uh, tools. Um, uh, this is this is uh, really really important to. To stress that um, the, the, the 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 environmental impact, uh, the, the production impact, uh, is, um, is, uh, is 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 really um, um, sometimes it's really absent in in, uh, in uh, the local policies uh, in this context, uh, which, which Prince mentioned and and Zebu mentioned, um, you know, the the wellness of a local society. Is simply depending on 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 the environmenting uh, environmental uh, um, state and and uh, products available. Uh, the, the 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 all its example was was uh, was simple, uh, uh, brilliant and 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 uh, accurate. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much, Adam. So Albim from uh, Slovenia, can you? Yeah, can you turn on your microphone yes. and just uh, for a final comment? Over to you, Albin. Yes, thank you. So I, I am glad to say that the examples of um, good practices which have been uh, presented and discussed during these three days are very useful. And I think that there exists a great, uh, let's say, uh, potential for the exchange of ideas among regions as also uh, a level of uh, probability to implement some of these practices also here in uh, Slovenia, uh, including, including the good practices presented by uh, colleagues in Navarra region. So finally, I would like to thank uh, all participants and especially colleagues uh, in Navarra for preparing and organizing the very nice and educative uh, online meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Albin. Uh, we can move to Elsa for uh, your final comment on the session and on the TIJ, actually. Okay. So we are approaching the end. Yeah, over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, I would like, like to point out the really high quality presented. Um, nevertheless, so sorry about the, it was not possible to be there because 
even though there were wonderful conditions about web streaming and about having everyone on board with wonderful videos and so on, being there would um, exciting and enriching for all of us. But that's our reality now. So it was a very, very good initiative. Um, I think that um, all of us could uh, could and can now from uh, the reflection on this uh, event take lessons on how how to better influence public policies. And of course, that was built also with all the comments from our all the colleagues. And on this, I, I must do a special remark uh, on Fritz's comments because I think he's a real LCA enabler. And thanks again for all the colleagues that made this uh, event in difficult situations, but such an interesting and enriching event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elsa, for your comment. So, since you you name him, him I would like to pass the floor to, to Fritz. Do you have a final comment on this? Uh, just a quick summary. Uh, I think we've seen a very high level of interest in the policy instruments and in the Navara situation. So, it's led to a very productive peer review interesting policies, various comments on the policies. Uh, it also shone some light onto the road ahead, not only the road behind. And I think that's always valuable. Uh, I just want to repeat my earlier comment and the comment of uh, some of the other participants also, that the lifecycle toolbox is bigger than what we're actually using in this project. It's a lot more potential in the life cycle toolbox to go further and to go wider. And it should lead to positive results. Uh, exchange of experience, lessons learned. Much of the focus has been on carbon footprinting. This is what people want to learn, how to repeat. And I think that's a very useful focus for moving forward. And hopefully that also can be broadened out into other life cycle instruments. Uh, I have one more comment, which was in part an answer to Yolanta's question yesterday. And that is to say, moving forward, we should perhaps think about using a variant of the Global Reporting Initiative, which is regional reporting as a motor for moving this whole project and the policies forward. Because it isn't until we know how to report on the results and report on the efforts that we can focus properly the minds of our various stakeholders. There are a number of municipalities, cities and regions that are producing sustainability reports or that produce a sustainability chapter in their annual reports. And I think we should perhaps consider using this as a vehicle also to ventilate some of the good practices and some of the uh, things that we are doing as we move forward. Uh, that's all I have to say. Uh, I think it's been a really interesting meeting, a lot of good contributions uh, and much more awareness now of what the Navarra region is doing and we hope that this can be replicated also in further TLJs when we other regions display their policies and we have the peer review in, in other parts of Europe. So congratulations to everyone. Thanks to everyone. I think it's been a really productive meeting. Um, thank, thank you very much. Changed. Thank you very much, Fritz. I would like also to ask uh, Rami from Zero Waste Scotland uh, if you want to uh, just uh, give us a final comment on the on this session and on the event i don't know if you are still there okay maybe maybe not so i would like to maybe maybe, maybe, sorry ah uh, yeah yeah no oh, sorry yeah. i want i was on mute oh. talking to myself okay. Uh, okay. i was just saying that yeah it's been a pleasure you know taking part in this exciting event and learning about all the work that all the regions are working on, especially Navarra at this stage. So yeah, really nothing to add. Like I'm really pleased to see like, you know, the majority of people here 
really keen to look at life cycle assessment and take it forward and try to use it as a tool to inform future policies. So, so yeah, just wishing all of them all the best. Thank, thank you very much, Rami, and thank you very much for your contribution. It was very precious and uh, helpful. So thanks a lot. I would like just to maybe also give the floor to my colleague, Deborah, that she's uh, with me now. Maybe if you want to take the floor and say a few words after this uh, three days event, please, the floor is yours. Oh. Three days event comment is quite difficult. So more than a comment uh, to me, it would be a final question for Raul. Um, and it, it is also connected to a point um, that uh, it was wrote by Pepka and uh, Elisa about the political atmosphere uh, to promote sustainable development in the region. I think it's quite connected to one of the weaknesses of the project, which is uh, production and political inertia. So, uh, yeah, my question was um, uh, how, how to go on, how to, to intervene with dialogues with key stakeholders now uh, in Navarra, if you, do you foresee some uh, practical actions to, uh, to face this, uh, this weakness? Uh, <laughs> Thank you for your Please. comment. Uh, we expect in, in next uh, session about uh, a smart specialist um, strategy in Navarra uh, will be the catalyst to improve the knowledge of other departments on create the uh, very, 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 very good atmosphere because today I think the atmosphere is warm and need to be, will be hot <laughs> in the next future. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Raul. I would like just to, to ask uh, the Navarra team if uh, Lombardy region is there, because I uh, not seen Alessandro or someone from Lombardy region. If uh, he's there, maybe you can just uh, switch on the microphone and say a few words about uh, the session. Okay, he sees. Um. Alessandro, can. Uh... Yeah. The mic was the microphone uh, not working? Ah, now. Okay, I good. To, okay. Over to you, Alessandro. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, um, first of all, I would like to apologize for the low profile contribution we gave in this meeting because. We are a bit understaffed, understaffed so far, and we are trying to catching up uh, in the in this period. So I, I'm I, I hope and I'm pretty sure in the coming months will be we will be more uh, productive and supportive into the project. Um, I really appreciated all the uh, the two the two videos, the two clips in particular, and the only regret is that we couldn't be there to see directly that experiences, those experiences, sorry. And uh, also just one consideration, I'm not an expert concerning policies, I'm just coordinating the project and, and we, are, we are little by little trying to involve the right person, the right people in the project, but just concerning the overlapping of the issues into different policy instruments that was, uh, that was um, uh, underlined before, just to say one, one, one thing, this is a problem we also have, of, co of course, in our region, when different policies, different policy instruments uh, can, can tackle and try to tackle in a different manner from a different perspective and issue. And so this can also be a problem, of course, but perhaps the awareness, first of all, of that this overlapping exist, and also the, the use, perhaps, I'm not sure, uh, of life cycle methodology to solve this overlapping and to 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 use similar uh, similar tools to uh, to analyze specifically the topic of uh, which is uh, the object of, of the overlapping can be a solution uh, just an idea that I was thinking of uh, just listening to you and then in the end uh, thank you very much to Navarra region for the for the meeting and for the well the nice organization and also the to the chairman for all the 
uh, the nice and gentle approach to the, to the, to the people who uh, gave, gave their contribution. That's okay. Th thank you very much, Alessandro. Thank you very much. So I think that we are uh, almost half an hour late. So I think that we, we should. Uh, sorry for sorry for this, uh, but I think that it was a very nice uh, session, and uh, yeah, I hope that uh, it will be helpful uh, for the Navarra government. So David, I would like to pass the floor again to you, and uh, I would like to thank you very much for the organization. It was a pleasure to be with you. And uh, yeah, so over to you, David. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Paolo. Um, I think we may have. Okay. Yes, so it's a. Uh, Sorry, David, we cannot hear you. Okay. Hello, and now? Yeah, now it's, yeah. Uh, it's good. Okay, yeah, because uh, apologies for that, because we're, we're next to one another. Sometimes we're a bit confused about which microphone is open. I'd like to pass very briefly to uh, to Raul, because he'd like to uh, to close things um, from this end here in Navarra. Okay, so Raul. Thank you, David. Uh, we really appreciate uh, your contribution, all partners, uh, your suggestions, your observations, and even uh, two companies, very grateful for them, uh, Sebio Gainza, Biosasun, Perminesan Di Agralco. Uh, uh, both of them were very, very nice uh, videos. And I think uh, we expect, we expect uh, uh, all contribution from Navarra, from all regions. We share this uh, expectation uh, as well for all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Raul. Okay, well, uh, that brings us uh, to, to the end of this uh, three-day event. Um, again, I'd like to reiterate what uh, Raul's just said. Uh, thank you very much to all of the panelists, all of the partners. Thank you for um, Paolo today and, uh, and Deborah there in the background. Um, before we finish, we're going to try to do um, a group photograph, okay? Um, so as I keep talking, I'd like you to all to, to try to turn your camera on, okay? And we're going to take a sort of family portrait of everybody. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go, they're, they're all appearing. Um, I'd also like to say uh, thank you, of course, to Eusebio for your uh, video and presentation. It was uh, wonderful. Uh, thank you to uh, to Fermina Sandy and Agralco. We're, we're all moving around here, right? Um, thank you um, for, for their presentation and, and David, my colleague David. I think he's appearing somewhere. That yeah, he's with Raúl. Okay, for um, for helping me there with the questions and so on. Uh, Irene and Sandra in the background um, for their hard work. Okay, so Irene and Sandra. Um, thank you to everybody. It's been a, a great pleasure for me personally. Um, I hope for you professionally, um, well, from what I'm hearing, of course, Fritz and Rami, uh, experts here, external experts, thank you to you two. Um, well, thank you to everyone. You're looking very wonderful, very, uh, as we say in Spanish, guapos en pantalla, very handsome. <laughs> okay, so big smile. Uh, Alessandro, yeah, we, we see you at last. Alessandro, hi, how lovely to see your face at last. Okay, um, and, and we have some attendees, which I, I think they don't have camera at the bottom. Um, yeah, you got what you need, guys? Yeah? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's wonderful. <laughs> that's wonderful, yeah. So, um, it's been great, uh, uh, you know, wonderful in, in these difficult times in which we're living to be able to carry on with projects, to carry on communicating. That's the key, isn't it? As, uh, as Rami said, collaboration, 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 communication, transversality, all of those things to, to keep these things moving forward. Uh, and I think um, today's peer review, thank you very much for that, Paola. Paolo, uh, fun, uh, fascinating. Um, I have lots of notes myself uh, for my activities in other government departments about transversality and about the necess necessity, essential need to communicate between departments to and, and get these ideas rolling backwards and forwards. Okay. Uh, and so 
just a few reminders before we finish. Um, as usual, the project activities are all posted to the web page. The web page is continually updated. Um, there's, the streaming is available in Twitter, uh, so you can look back at your performance there and and uh, and also, uh, you know, the finer points of the discussion. If you want to go over that again and take notes and things like that, that's a great resource. One of the advantages of of this uh, of meeting in this format is that that we have this permanent record that we can consult. Um, and that Sandra will re produce also a summary report of all of the proceedings. Uh, Deborah, excuse me, I've just been corrected. Yes, Deborah will, re will produce the summary report of all the proceedings, and that will be also available on the uh, on the project website. And uh, that's all. It's, it almost makes me sad to say goodbye, but uh, we're, we're over time. Uh, thank you very much again to everybody involved, and uh, I think it's been a very positive experience. And goodbye. Goodbye.